Welcome back to the 6-5 Podcast. Daniel and I are back, and guess what? We are talking AI. It is our favorite topic. Daniel, do we talk about anything else? It feels like more and more this is what we spend our time on, Pat, but it is the largest and most important trend that will probably take place in our lifetimes, the rest of my very long and yours. And it is one of those things that I think right now people want to hear about. So in my opinion, Pat, what else would we want to talk exactly. about? Exactly. Well, and, and most of the heat and most of the conversation uh, in totality has been about AI in the data center. But you and I both know, and history shows, that over time, uh, any type of major compute phenomena goes farther and farther out on the edge for, for many reasons. We've seen it in, in many inflection points. Uh, in smartphones and in PCs, uh, there have been some fits and starts, right? But that's just, it's natural in a market. Everything's not going to work and and be an overnight uh, sensation. Uh, you, we do have to build out, though, the infrastructure and get developers ready and get the software ready to make that work. We also need to ha have to have the right chips in there. And I'd love to introduce our guest uh, for MediaTek, Adam King, to talk about consumer AI. Adam, welcome to the 6.5. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Daniel. It's a pleasure to be here. So welcome again to the show. Uh, let's start high level here. I'd like to talk about your vision uh, for AI at MediaTek and how are you positioning yourself as an AI enable, enabler, maybe beyond the obvious? Sure. And uh, first of all, I agree with what Daniel said earlier about AI being the biggest technology wave to, to hit us ever. And uh, it's a great time to be at MediaTek because we think we're pretty well positioned to, uh, you know, help the world along this AI journey. Uh, we actually have pretty deep roots in, in AI, uh, but in the more traditional AI, we're now at the point where, you know, you can distinguish between old or traditional AI and the new generative AI. Um, but certainly on consumer devices and on the client, which has been historically our, our, uh, our focus and will continue to be going forward. Um, traditional AI, meaning things like image uh, enhancement, voice recognition, object detection, those things we've been doing for a long time. Uh, we're actually on the seventh generation of our NPU uh, shipping and products today. Um, but, uh, but clearly what's, Transformational is the move to generative AI with LLMs and transformer models. Um, and the question there is how much of that is going to be run on the edge versus in the cloud? Uh, by the way, we're, we're also increasing our presence in cloud infrastructure, as I, I think you guys know. Um, but let me talk about the, the edge side for a while because, um, you know, even though we're an edge company, we'll you know, we, the, the reality is that we understand that uh, generative AI and agentic AI is going to primarily live in the cloud. Uh, you know, my my 50 tops NPU on, on my uh, MediaTek phone is great, but it can't compete with, you know, billions of dollars of GPUs and HBM in, in a data center. You're always going to get much bigger models, more performance, better quality from the cloud. Um, but there are cases where it makes sense to run a, at least a portion of your workload on the edge. I think for all the reasons that we know um, for you know reduced latency, for privacy, for um, reducing cloud costs, but it really depends quite a bit on what usage you're talking about and what device you're talking about. So clearly you're enabling AI and Pat and I have been sort of at the we'll call it the leading edge of the edge. We've been talking for, it's close to two years um, since we kind of rolled out that, you know, on device and the future is going to be this kind of mobile AI experience, smaller models, more efficient. Um, you know, Adam, I would say that some of it's happened. Some of it's going to happen, maybe some of the maybe won't happen. I mean, what's your take on how the market is evolving? I mean, we're seeing models hit every day. Some are bigger, some are smaller. You're seeing energy constraints, network constraints. I mean, you have to be really tracking closely this, this market evolution, uh, both for how you continue this consumer devices side. And of course, as you mentioned, the expansion of the 
media tech business in the cloud. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we're, it's it's been really gratifying to see the really rapid progress on small language models and the the efficiency and the quality just keeps going up every month. Uh, so it you know uh, it makes it more and more feasible to run good generative AI at the edge. Uh, but uh, it really does depend on on the use case as to to where you want to have that workload. Let me give you um, maybe an extreme example of where it makes some sense to run something at the edge. Let's talk about the smart home, right? You've probably got six or so security cameras at your house, uh, most outside, maybe some inside. And when you think about those cameras running 4K video 24 seven, uh, and if you're you know, a service provider to those cameras and you've got 10 million customers all uploading that amount of video, it's just the, the cloud costs become enormous. And so it makes a lot of sense to have some amount of local AI to do the inference, the filtering, the object detection to figure out, you know, when your dog uh, escaped out the side door and to, to proactively alert you of that. Um, not to mention the privacy uh, concerns. People are obviously going to be very wary about putting cameras, especially inside their homes. And they'll only do it if they know that stuff is, is not leaving the premises. So, so that's a great example of where you really need edge AI. Um, other things, you know, not so much. Like if I'm doing a, a, a I'm using my Copilot PC or my Gemini Chromebook, and I want to summarize a 27 page legal document. Do I care if it takes an extra three seconds to go back up to the cloud and back? And no, I probably don't. Um, so the, there is a latency, but it doesn't really matter. I think what's really exciting is um, that Edge AI is going to improve, I think, every existing device, but it's it's actually going to enable new categories that really just couldn't be successful without Edge AI. And that's where you get into this space of um, what Jensen Wong calls uh, physical AI, right? This progression of traditional AI, generative AI, genetic AI, up to physical AI, which is devices that live and interact in the real world uh, beyond your desktop. Things like humanoid robots and autonomous vehicles and mobile AR glasses, where you're constantly having to sense and interpret what's going on around you and you need it in real time. You know, if, you're, if your AI glasses are gonna warn you about the dog do in the sidewalk a few steps ahead of you, uh, a five second latency is a real problem in that case, right? You, you want it to be immediate. Yeah, I could have used uh, I could have used that low latency in, in one of my Roomba vacuums about five years ago. But yeah, I really liked your uh, your example. Uh, you you didn't use the word Amazon, but I will. Uh, I have probably fifty Amazon based uh, devices that, at least based on certain teardowns I've seen, you're you're definitely inside. So you're definitely uh, all over my home. Uh, I do have a question though, is maybe we can talk about um, even more consumer devices that, that you're in. So let's talk about maybe some of the devices you're in and specifically uh, what you're doing in the devices because because they do vary. Yeah, sure. We, we're, we're in an incredible range of devices. Um, I, I like to tell people that they probably have at least five media tech based products in their house that they, they use every day and may not be aware of, of uh, the silicon provider. Um, but we're in, um, as, as you indicated, smart home devices from uh, certainly TVs, uh, streaming devices, smart displays. Uh, we have a very large Wi Fi or connectivity business. So there's a good chance we're in your home router. Um, there's a chance we're, we're the Wi-Fi in your PC. Uh, and we're in a lot of those compute devices as well. Um, Android tablets, we are actually the number one silicon provider for Android tablets. Uh, we're the number one ARM provider, ARM, uh, ARM, ARM Chromebook supplier. Um, and we've, we've had some really cool products come out recently. Uh, we're in phones in a very significant way. Um, especially in China, but increasingly going global. Yeah, we've definitely seen the proliferation of MediaTek. Uh, hear about it coming up a lot more, entering new spaces, creating new, um, you know, 
Matt, you know, as, as the premium mid-tier sort of the debate continues to grow, we've seen uh, MediaTek make uh, head inroads in both, and it's been impressive to watch. Another place, you know, you sort of alluded to was the inroads in the smart in the home. And I've heard you kind of mentioned it a little bit in the last answer. Pat talked about his vacuum cleaner running over his feet. But uh, talk a little bit about, you know, kind of how the company, how is MediaTek and how, you know, more broadly, how is AI um, you know, transforming the smart home. This to me, by the way, Adam, feels like something that was sort of promised for many years. Um, you know, intelligent homes, touch panels that had everything coming out of ceilings and walls and TVs coming out of test desks and tables and IoT, AI, smart devices, applications, um, and now AI and agents seems like it's the perfect chance to really democratize something that was really limited to the ultra Uber homes with big dollars to, to make integrations. Are you seeing that tr that trend now with AI? Yeah, I, I really believe that, um, that AI is gonna drive the next wave of growth and improve user experiences for, for the smart home. And, and you know, and let's give the smart home a little credit. I mean, maybe we have to look at it at a bigger time scale, but compared to 10 years ago, your home is a lot smarter than it was. You've got, you know, you've got cameras, you've got devices, you've got um, the ability to control your lights, you've got, you know, the ability to wirelessly control or remotely control your thermostats. Um, so, so the the smart home has made tremendous progress, but there are still challenges with usability, interoperability. Um, you know, one of the the challenges is that people don't just upgrade their smart home overnight. You kind of do it piece by piece, right? You're like, oh, well, you know, maybe I need a, a, a new Fire TV stick, or uh, maybe I'll, I'll put in this wireless sensor in my bathroom, or, or I'll install this, uh, you know, new remote controlled um, curtain motor. Um, but you have to do that, you know, you want that to, to seamlessly work with whatever system that you have. Um, and so there, there is still challenges with setup, interoperability, um, too much time spent just, you know, setting up and managing these things for, versus making them seamless. And AI has the, the, uh, the power to transform all that. Um, there are a couple of other technologies that are helping with that as well that, that I know you guys are aware of with uh, thread radios that allow, you know, mesh networks so everything is connected seamlessly uh, matter so that you can solve some of the interoperability challenges across these devices. Um, you put all that to, together, and I think that the smart home is going to get another boost here. Yeah, so uh, we talked a lot about current markets, smartphones, tablets, uh, smart homes, smart TVs, uh, that you have a wide array of solutions in. Let's talk about the future here. What are some investments that you're making uh, in, in future uh, new target segments uh, out there that you can talk about? Um, sure, yeah, we're, we're uh, uh, yeah, and again, I, I sort of break up the world into to two things, which is how do we make existing product categories better with AI? Uh, and then what entirely new product categories uh, will there will there be in the world and that we can participate in? Um, it's just uh, to to give the existing devices one one more sort of plug. Um, I, I do think they will essentially all be enhanced by AI in one way or another. Um, the amount of cloud versus edge workload is going to vary depending on the device and the usage, uh, but we are increasingly putting. Uh, AI capabilities, we're putting NPUs, we're putting our, our software stacks into just about every product that we make. Um, I wanted to say one more thing too on the, the smart home, Daniel, to, to finish answering your question, which is uh, I do think that the, the there's long been this idea of should people have a hub in their smart homes, right? Um, for local storage, for local control, and certainly the, the DIYers do that, but the world largely went away from having a hub because everything just ran and connected in the cloud. You didn't really need a hub. Uh, but with AI, there's um, maybe an interesting shift back to a hub model where it now makes sense to have some amount of local AI to be able to connect all of your devices. 
And it solves that upgrade problem because um, if I connect all my existing cameras and sensors and light bulbs to my smart home hub, essentially I've made them all smarter and I didn't have to go out and, and buy, you know, a new one of each of those devices. Um, so, so I think we're seeing the, the big smart home providers experiment with bringing more capabilities back to this idea of a, of a hub. Um, and the, the target form factor seems to be the smart display. So it's a, you know, device with a screen that a user can interact with. Um, but then Pat, to, ask, to answer your question about future product categories, um, you know, we're certainly investing in, in, uh, in vehicles, autonomous vehicles, and then just, you know, cockpits for, for non-autonomous vehicles as well. So that's a, a big new bat that we kicked off a couple of years ago. Um, we are investing more in cloud infrastructure. Uh, we are doing more and more premium compute devices. So uh, you've seen what we did with NVIDIA with the DGX Spark. Um, we're making existing devices more premium as well. So we have like the, the Lenovo Chromebook 14, the best Chromebook on the market, 50 tops of on-device AI. Uh, we are now in the in Samsung's flagship Android tablets. Um, you know, these are the most premium Android tablets on the market. Uh, you're seeing us in the Tab 11 Ultra and the Tab 10 before it. Uh, so we're both, you know, div we're delivering higher levels of, of performance for existing categories, um, as well as these, these new markets. Oh yeah, it sounds like there's a whole lot more to come, Adam. And clearly, as you kind of go down, I feel like this was the and conversation because it's like MediaTek is doing this and we're doing this and we're doing this. And it seems that the company is really doing uh, not, not only a very good job, but a very important job right now, which is diversifying itself to be able to handle a pretty significant pivot. You've got sensing, you know, in terms of the homes, you've got handsets and devices, but we know that having the small system is going to be important as new potential form factors enter, whether that's some of the stuff we've kind of seen with glasses and foldables. But also, of course, we have a trend with things like these pins and earpieces and things that we don't quite know yet, but it's good that you're there because it's going to be important that you stay flexible. And then, of course, you talked about TVs, devices in the homes and, of course, in the cloud. So um, really good to get a background from you. And I appreciate you taking so much time with us to, to kind of take us through everything, give us the rundown. And I wanted to just say, uh, you know, as, as, as an analyst looking at the market, you opened my eyes to a few new things, which is really important. And I appreciate that. So thanks so much for taking some time to join us here today. Well, thank you, Daniel. Daniel, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, you giving me the time. And thank you, everybody, for being part of this episode of the 6-5. This is a 6-5 webcast, and we appreciated the chance to talk to MediaText, Adam King. Great conversation. Hit subscribe. Join us for all of our other content. Check out the show notes to learn more about MediaTek and what we discussed here on this podcast. But for Patrick Moran and myself, it's time to say goodbye. We will see you all later.